Okay, well, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling Germany right now. Ah, uh, you're in Germany right now. Okay, okay. Are you going to be there in Christmas in Germany or flying back to the States? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'll probably stay here for Christmas. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, this is Pedro Alonso from Metal Journal. This is a digital newspaper on hard rock, heavy metal music. And we are based in Bilbao, in the Basque country, north of Spain. Ah, okay, Bilbao. Yeah, we've been there many times. I remember. It. Yeah, yeah. I have interviewed you face to face here some years ago. Uh, so we met some years ago. I remember. Uh, to go into today we have a, we have posted a piece of news on on accept a very good news because you are playing next month in in Pamplona. Yes. Yeah. In Navarra, and and this is sold out. This is a piece of news of today. It's is sold it? out one one month before the show. Oh, I love to hear that. Woohoo! <laughs> so very good news for, for for today. Very very good news. So let's go to talk a little bit because we want to the sell out also in Madrid and Barcelona. Okay. Yes, please. Let's do it. Let's sell out everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First of all, let's going to talk a bit about your upcoming tour with three shows in Spain in January, like we have told before. What can you tell me about uh, your shows? Will they change a lot in regard of the recent concerts you have played in the United States this fall? Will it be different or? Well, every show is slightly different. I mean, it's never exactly the same anyhow. Um, but we're planning to bring some songs from the new album, Too Mean to Die, which is uh, has been out for a while, but we've never really done headline shows in Europe with this new album. So it will definitely be a new for us and a new for the fans to hear. Um, you know, a headline set, a full two hour show with, with a bunch of new songs and also some un, unsuspected uh, old classics. OK, OK, OK. I can imagine you are playing at least uh, four new songs from the two into that. Yeah, maybe even more. I mean, we sometimes play up to five, but we, we do change the set list from time to time. We, we always tweak it a little bit. We always go like, oh, let's play this one tonight and let's do this one tomorrow. And so it's never exactly the same. Okay. And by the way, we talk a little bit about your previous show in uh, previous tour in the United States. You have uh, to solve a very difficult situation when Mark uh, could not sing at uh, several concerts. Yeah. You even had uh, Jason McMaster as a replacement uh, on, in one or two shows. Yeah. How did you solve it so quickly? It was impressive. How did you, uh, how did you manage to solve this difficult situation? I don't know, in some days. Yeah, it was actually within a day or two. Um, well, I remember I was on the phone for like a whole day. Just to, I called a lot of people that I thought would be able to jump in. And a lot of people were saying, oh, I'd love to sing to you for you. I would do it in a heartbeat, but I'm in the studio right now. Somebody else said, oh, I'm in South America on tour right now. Another guy said, I'm working in my studio on my studio record right now, but I would love to do it. And then finally, McMaster said, oh, I'm ready. So it was great. Okay. And the good thing is a lot of people are familiar with some of our classic tunes. So and we said when Jason said he can do the show, we said, OK, we don't expect you to know all the new songs uh, because, hey, let's let's concentrate on classic stuff that you do know. And we adjusted our set list accordingly so that we can play a good full show, but with stuff that Jason was familiar with. OK, OK, OK. Uh, regarding the European tour, this is the tour that you had to play uh, two years ago because the pandemic, but uh, you had to postpone once and another. Right. Uh, it was not possible to to maintain the the original bill with Flossan and Jetson and and Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons. It was yeah, not no. possible at all. No, it wasn't. I mean, otherwise we would have done it. Uh, but they had other plans by now, so it wasn't possible to. Um, do the same package. So we were looking for somebody else and we found the Iron Maidens and I think it's going to be fun. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, um, why did you decide to bring the Iron Maidens? Um, why, what, what was the reason? The reason is that we, we were looking for a band that would fit the bill and that would fit stylistically and we thought, you know, the Iron Maidens are interested and it sounds like a great idea. Mm -hmm. 
at least here in, in, in Spain, there is a controversy because uh, some people uh, love the tribute bands, but uh, others uh, don't like it, don't like it at all. Uh, I don't know if you have thought about it, uh, because I, I don't know outside of Spain, but at least in Spain, some people love it because there are a lot of uh, tribute tours, but uh, some people don't like also. So I don't know, it's a bit of a controversy here, at least in Spain. I don't know if you know anything about it. <laughs> I do not. There's always a little bit of controversy in Spain about anything. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a little bit of controversy in Spain. I don't know what it is this time. No, I think it's going to be fine. People love the idea. It's going to be great. Okay, okay. By the way, are you interested in the Accept Tribute bands? I don't know if you know any of the people playing uh, Accept songs only, Tribute, Accept, uh, tribute bands. I've, I've seen some and I've heard some and some of them are great. I love it. I mean, it's a great honor if people go through the trouble of learning your songs and playing your stuff. I think it's amazing. It's a, yeah, I'm very flattered by it. Okay, okay. Let's go to keep on talking about the, the live shows. Uh, since Philip uh, saw center the band, uh, you are playing with three guitar players. Yeah. Uh, do you feel there is a new dimension for the accept sound with the three guitars? Certainly. I think it makes things, it opens up the things and it opens up the spectrum a little bit because it's, it's almost like a mini orchestra now. You have one more player in your, in your arsenal and it, it allows us to, to play additional parts that we cannot do with two people. And we can do a lot of dueling solos and twin solos and still have a rhythm guitar. Uh, so it's, it's great. It's really a lot of fun. I never thought it would be so, so good. Because I always thought two guitars is all you can handle, but no, it's not. It's actually fun to play with three. I really, really like it. And it enables me to, to share more stuff with Phil and, you know, it's, it's great. This is something that was really strange back in the 80s, but nowadays there are lots of bands, for example, Iron Maiden or even Halloween, and now like I said, playing with three guitars. Yeah, uh, and why not? I never thought it was something that I would choose to do but it, it just so happened that we got to know this guy phil Schaus, and we really really liked him in the band and he i love him as a guitar player as as an opposite uh player next to me on stage and we decided you know hey there's no rule and no law that says you have to have only two guitar players why not three and it worked out great so it's great okay tell us a bit more about philip south because uh uh, he's, he's very much in the limelight, like you have told me. Uh, he's really important part in the in the Accept uh, live shows right now. Uh, yeah. What can you tell me about him? Because he was a bit unknown when when you decide to to call to call him to be part of the band. Can you tell me anything more about him about Philip? Uh, well, he was a friend or a colleague of our drummer. Uh... Christopher Williams, the, the the two of them had to play had played together in several projects, and they've played around town in Nashville in these jam sessions. So they had a, quite a bit of well, somewhat of a history a year, few, for a few years. And when it was clear that Uwe couldn't do that orchestra tour in 2019, we thought like, well, shit, who else can we get? And Christopher said. Uh, I know this guy who's really quick, he's great, easy, great character, and he he learns quick, and he, I think he will love him. So we, we called him, invited him, and it was true, man. He's a, he's a really versatile player, and he really uh, picks up really well. Hold on. And uh, so, yeah, that's why we cho chose him. All right, all right. I saw you this year at Barcelona Rock Fest Festival. Uh, you have, uh, we talk about your life uh, uh, presence, uh, you have uh, two, two rows, two lines on a stage with Mark, uh, Philip and you in the first row, and Martin and Uwe uh, and Christopher in the second row. I don't know, it reminds me a little bit to Judas Priest with Ian Hill in the second row. Um, how did you come up with this stage uh, presence? I don't know, man. That's yeah, that's a strange question. It just sort of developed in, into that. You know, we don't. I don't know, man. Everybody finds their role on stage, and this is how it works for us. Uh huh. Okay. No real reason. It's no real deep meaning behind it. It's just something that works for us. It will be pretty similar on tour next month. I can imagine. 
Yeah, maybe. I mean, but then again, there's we, we always take the liberty of changing things as we as we see fit. You know, if something else develops, then we'll we'll change it for that. There's no no law or rule that we have to do it that way. All right, all right. Let's going to talk a little bit about the future. What can you tell me about the progress of the new uh, record? Because I know that you are uh, working on on a new upcoming asset record. Yeah, uh, well, I should be working on it, but I'm always busy doing all these other things, quite quite honestly. <laughs> I should be writing songs this minute, but as you see, I'm doing interviews and I'm doing planning for the next tour. So sometimes there's just not enough time in the day to get stuff done. And uh, I regret that very much. I wish I could just spend more time just writing songs and just being, you know, a free spirit musician. But a lot of times I'm also planning and and managing and i don't know i'm doing a lot of other things besides just music and i wish i could play just more music and not have to do all the other stuff but i'm not complaining i'm just explaining why things mm -hmm. take a little longer sometimes so it would be difficult to release it next year maybe in 2024 no all it takes is a good i mean i've I've done some quite a bit already and i've, I've met a few times even with uwe lulis uh we got some really cool ideas together so it's it's coming but it's just not going very fast all right all right uh, you will release uh, this album when you will release it uh, with napalm records after more than 10 years with the uh, nuclear blast why did you decide to change the record label because things had changed with nuclear blast they are no longer the same company that we signed up with 10 years ago um, they've just gone through some major changes and they were bought up by a corporation and i don't know we just felt it was time to make the move and we got a good offer from a dedicated team at napalm Records, so we figured this be the the time to make the switch you have signed a contract for um more than one record with uh, napalm records yeah okay can you tell me how many or no i no. cannot because i don't remember <laughs> all right okay okay Okay, four years ago, you were really sad when Peter Baltes left the band. You even called him your musical brother. Yeah. Uh, how has been your relationship with Peter these four years since 2018? Uh, sadly, there is hardly any contact, which I regret very much. But it seems to be the case. Every time anybody leaves the band, it's usually as, as much as I regret it, that there's hardly ever any contact anymore which I think is pretty sad. And I wish we could just stay in touch and stay friends, but I don't know. He has, he's been very reclusive lately. So I think he just needs the time to get away from it all. I think that that was his idea maybe, but I don't know. I can't speak for Peter what his motivations are. I just um, can just assume things, but I wish we would. I mean, why can't people just stay in touch even if they're not playing in the same band anymore? It's sad in a way, but it's a sad. It's reality a lot of times. Uh -huh. And what was the real reason why he left the band? Because he didn't explain at the time. No, he didn't. So I wish he had. I don't know. You have to ask him. OK. And what do you feel now when you see him touring with UDO? Uh, I'd rather not comment on that. I mean, like, again, it, I don't want to get into it. He's He's been my brother. I love him to death. And he, I'm sure he has his reasons for what he does. Uh -huh. Yeah, because uh, another piece of news of today is that the previous UDO bass player has left the band. It could be Peter, the new bass player, on a permanent basis, I think. But this is a piece of news of today. Hmm. OK. Uh, are you going to comment me about, uh, I had to ask you, I don't know if you're going to comment it, but uh, Udo Disneyder uh, said that he was going to to left playing Accept songs some years ago. He founded this Disneyder band, but nowadays he's uh, still playing Accept songs with UDO. Um, <laughs> does it mean something for you or? <laughs> no, I just think it's funny, but I, I'm as a general rule, I don't comment on anything he does. Um, and I ask for understanding. I don't want to get into it, but I mean, you said everything there is to say. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Uh, just to finish the interview, some questions about the past a little bit, not related with 
with uh, other members. Yeah. Uh, the, the 80s were the big years, both for heavy metal and accept. Uh, yeah. What were the highlights that you will never forget from back in the 80s, your high, personal highlights? Well, uh, as you can imagine, there's a ton of them. Um, God, I remember, I mean, I remember so much and then again, so little. Sometimes it's a big blur and it all seems to be thousands of shows that I can't remember much, but then there's always these few moments that I do remember. And um, and had some great unforgettable moments, and sometimes they, they these memories pop up. Um, I mean, I can tell you generally the time around Balls to the Wall was maybe the more, most exciting time, 1984, when we made a big jump from a regional band in Germany to an international band coming from America, touring there for six months, and then coming back to Europe and touring all over Spain. I mean, uh, all over Europe, including Spain. So it was, I mean, it was fantastic times. And I do remember being drunk on the Ramblas in uh, Barcelona. Mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> back in the 80s. <laughs> back in the 80s, yeah. Now I don't drink anymore, but I, I remember being stone drunk in Spain one time, yeah, with all the guys and we were, yeah. I, I, I was so drunk I could only crawl down there. <laughs> <laughs> Good fun story. <laughs> That's one of the good times, but also the next morning was never very good. So I stopped drinking a few years ago because I quite honestly I cannot handle it anymore. My 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 body can't tolerate it. I've got so I'm I'm tired of the headaches, so I don't drink at all anymore. <laughs> oh <laughs> very very good done. <laughs> okay, okay. This is a difficult question for any accept fans. Um, imagine for yourself also. Do you have any album that do you like best? A lot of the classics, I don't know, the Restless and Wild Balls, the Walls, Metal Heart. I don't know, do you have any album you, you like the best? I got to tell you a secret. I never really listened to them. N never, oh. ever. The only time I ever listen to them is when I have to pick out songs or when I have to work on something. Then I go occasionally and listen to the, to the, to the individual songs. But I never really just put on the albums for my own enjoyment. Um, I, don't, I just don't. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the most significant albums are probably Restless and Wild and Balls to the Wall and Metal Heart, maybe those three. But, okay. you know, and other than that, I think every fan and every band member has their own favorite or stuff they like the most. You know, that's, I mean, they're all my children. I all, I wrote everything. I was part of it in everything. So I didn't write it all alone, but I was working on every song and I was, partly responsible for everything. So I can't really say anything bad about anyone, any of them. Some turned out better than others, but you know, it's just, it's just natural. I like them all. They're all my children in a way, you know? Okay, okay, all right. It's almost one like, record that was, almost, one record that, oh, sorry? It's almost like asking you as a father, which is your favorite children, uh, child, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Five children, you would never say, oh, I like this one the best. You would always say, yeah, come on, man. <laughs> okay, okay. One record that was very, very different to the rest was uh, It the Hit back right. in 89. Uh, how do you see it now with the perspective of time? I, I, you don't listen to it, but how do you remember it? It was a difficult time for us because nothing seemed to work out in our favor. I do remember that. So I don't have great memories of the whole time. Uh, I don't like to think of about this whole period too much but i do know the essence of that album was really really good and i thought and i know it, it could have been a fantastic album but it wasn't meant to be it was a lot of a lot of stuff was wrong during the production then the whole thing the chemistry with a singer didn't go right and then some people left the band afterwards and it was just overall a period that was not very fun so, uh, but the actual songs could have been really, really well. They were really great songs. And the, the, the I mean, I, funny enough, I meet a lot of fans that, that almost apologize for, for me and say, you know what? I know this album turned out not to be so good, but I really, really like it. But people almost, <laughs> yeah. people almost apologize for liking the album, which is so weird. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and later came the 90s, and the 90s were a different, difficult uh, time for everybody in the heavy metal scene. Mm. You came once, you came another time with those records, or just an overrule, Predator. Uh, what do you remember the 90s? 
Uh, basically, a, a, a terrible time for heavy metal and not a good time for, for us in the band. Uh, and I'm glad the 90s were over. I basically have a dark cloud over the whole 10 years of the 90s, to be honest. Uh-huh. That's when you decided to change your, your career. You became exactly. a yeah, photographer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's Or, exactly because I thought, actually, personally, I thought music was over for me. I thought heavy metal is dead. I, it, it, it was great while it lasted. But then during the 90s, I thought, well, shit, this, this metal stuff is over. Nobody wants to hear it any, anymore. And it's time to make a change in my life. That's when I became a photographer, which because photography to me is also art and it was something that is creative and it was the second next second ne next next second best thing in life that I knew, you know. I, number one was always music, but photography was number two. So if I can't do number one, I do number two. And okay. uh, I did that um, for many years, did it actually quite successful. I became a really you know made a lot of money did really well with, with 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 photography but when i had a chance to play music again i was right on board with that because that's that's my first love okay and when you became a full-time photographer did you miss the music uh, i don't know if you were into new bands at the time or or you didn't want to listen to anything back at the time Yeah, I mean, I listened to radio, I listened to stuff, but I wasn't really in the music scene. I did, wasn't interested. And I didn't I didn't play guitar for sometimes for a few months at a time. I mean, sometimes I picked up the guitar, but I wasn't really, no, I wasn't, I was out, man. I was completely out of it. Okay, okay. And just to finish the interview, interview any plans for any other solo record in the future or... Yeah, I mean, I'm always working on new stuff and I'm working with my partner, Ava, the violinist that I met on this um, the 2019 uh, orchestra tour. Mm -hmm. We're working on music together, but I don't, I'm not really sure when it will be released and what it will be released. We're, we're, you know, we're always creating stuff and it will maybe be released one day. I don't know. There's several, several projects that I'm working on simultaneously that involve classical music and guitar, and, but we'll have to wait and see until it's it, it's further along okay. nothing concrete yet i mean right now except is pretty much my main focus and i i that's what i want to do because i need to get this new album done and record it first before i can concentrate on anything like a solo project again mm -hmm. and do you still have time to listen to to music Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, you're always in the car. You always something. I listen to a lot of music. Sometimes classical stuff. Sometimes just streaming pop crap. I don't know. Sometimes I just want to be have some noise in the background, and I don't almost care. But I'm not a person who listens to heavy metal all day long. I can tell you that. Uh huh. Anything that has surprised you in the last time, or that you remember? About what? About music, I don't know, about any band that you have liked, any kind of a style or... No, like I said, I listen. I don't really listen to bands and styles. I listen to classical music and, I mean, no, sorry. All, all right, all right. And as a photographer, do you think that uh, it's a difficult task to be a rock photographer? Very much, yeah. I would never try that. I mean, my field of photography was completely different. It was away from music. Yeah. Uh, because the digital times changed the whole, one of the reasons why I'm glad to be out of photography is because as soon as it went digital, everything changed so much, you know, now you can take pictures with your iPhone that are much better than anything I could do with film 10, 20 years ago, quality wise. Yeah. I mean, quality wise, not necessarily a better photo, um, but I don't know when, when things went digital. It, it's the same as in the music business. You remember the times when it was really expensive to record an album? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, a day in the studio was like thousands of dollars. And now it's, everything's digital and everybody can make a record in their bedroom on a laptop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the whole market gets flooded with new bands and new releases, which is fine, but, but it changed everything, of course. And the same thing happened. In, in photography, as soon as anything gets digital, 
it becomes easier to do and it, the prices go down and the market changes completely. So it's no longer as as easy to be a photographer and make a living nowadays because uh, yeah. it, I mean, there's all this free photography everywhere and, and the, the value just goes down when it goes yeah. digital, you know. That's right. Okay, anything you want to add uh, that we haven't talked about that you want to mention that you think is important and, and we haven't talked about in this interview? Yes, that I love my life, heavy metal is awesome, and I'm looking forward to go to Spain. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Hopefully we'll see you here in one month, exactly, approximately. Yes, first show is uh, January the 20th. Yes, so... please. I want to hear all the bands. I want to hear, hear everybody in 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 Athet, Ole, Ole, Ole. I want to hear all that. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, hopefully, I will be there in Pamplona, and uh, all the very best for this new year. And and we'll see you in one month. Excellent, my friend. All right. Nice talking with you. We'll see you then. Okay. Thank you very much. You Thank got you, it. Thank you, sure. Bye.